Good afternoon everybody. Um, today I'm going to paint a uh, couple of fish on a stone. I saw a YouTube video the other day and it looked so lovely and I was um, thinking about some doing something similar to put in my pond um, because I can't have fish. Uh, we have herons around here and they just eat them so uh, the best thing to do is to paint some on stones and put them in your pond. <laughs> anyway, it's a fun idea. I thought it would be lovely to share it with you. And um, yeah, if you want to share this tutorial, please do. Please subscribe, like, make comments, um, send me pictures of your stones. I'm on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram if you want to follow me there as well and uh, I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Okay so what I've got is a stone that I collected from a beach yesterday. Uh, it's, it's nice round even surface. Um, give yourself a chance by trying to find a good stone. Um, I've got an undercoat of pale blue. I'm using acrylic paint here today. Today, The reason why is because I want to be able to put it in the water. So acrylic paint is uh, well, it's plastic based uh, paint so you can paint it and it will go outside. I'm not sure how long it will last in water. Um, submerged constantly I don't know but I'm probably going to put a layer of uh, waterproof varnish on on top as well just to make extra sure but like I said acrylic paint is waterproof so it should be fine whether it lasts for 10 years is a different matter but we'll we'll try it and see I've done paintings on stones before outside um, just in the garden and things like that um, but never for water so i'm just going to paint like i said i've got an undercoat of pale blue i've dried that off with a hair dryer and i'm just going to paint now my first coat of orange on this keep your paint nice and thick we've had this conversation before about acrylic paint really you should be using it straight out of the tube or mixing it straight out of the tube with other paint and not using too much liquid. The main failure with acrylic is putting too much liquid in it. It ends up looking like watercolour and you don't want that to happen. Now, the second problem you may come across, I did sketch this out very roughly. I just caught a couple of um, images off the internet of koi carp and I just roughly sketched out the outlines of the two fish first. Um, yeah, so don't mix too much paint uh, water into your acrylic paint. And if you find, for example, um, sometimes you'll find that acrylic paint, depending on how much you've spent on it, is quite thin, um, as in it's transparent so that's as opposed to opaque so you might find as these dry that your first coat is a little bit washy so if that's the case put a coat on let it dry and then apply a second coat this is very therapeutic this sort of painting especially as it's on a 3D surface instead of a 2D surface, which is what we normally work on. Now, this fish down here has got patches of orange, um, but it's sort of a, a white colour and it's got bits of blue on it as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint that one white first and then I will put the colours on top. This fish has got an orange tail but as it peters off it becomes sort of paler orange so I'm going to make a paler orange color up and put that on now you can see I don't know whether you can see that let's hold it up to the camera that the 
paint is a little bit transparent. You find with sort of oranges and yellows in acrylic that it, it can be quite transparent. So I'm going to wait for that to dry and I'm going to apply a, another coat once it's dry. If you don't want to wait, dry it off with a hairdryer. So this second fish, I'm just going to take some white paint directly from the tube and I'm just going to colour this one in white. So you can sit there with your cup of tea and watch me slowly fill these fish in. I had my art chat this morning and that was about how to take photographs for your artwork that's as a subject matter and also how to photograph your artwork once you've finished and that art chat is currently on YouTube if you fancy having a look at it it's very useful especially if you're serious about your artwork um, to start working from your own pictures from your own photographs rather than working from images off the internet or from calendars and magazines and things like that because of course they belong to other people so there's a, a copyright issue there to start with but you know it just lets us informs us about your character if the image in the in the first place has come from you it sort of informs us about your personality and what you're interested in so it's really important that you work from your own images now again this white is a little bit transparent so I'm going to get let that to dry off again um, I'm going to actually take my hair dryer because I want to speed this up so I'm just going to dry it off very quickly so you can see that acrylic paint it dries very quickly so I'm going to apply right I'm just applying this second coat here and just saying that it's really important that you have your brush nice and full of paint when you're painting edges just to give you a nice even coverage and stop the edge of the line around the outside of this fish from being broken. If you only have a small amount of paint on your brush, then you won't get that lovely. You can see that I'm just I've turned the brush because there's some paint on the other side and I'm just doing that edge there. If you don't have enough paint on your brush, it starts to dry out and will give you a broken line. So make sure your brush is always full, especially if you want to paint a nice flat surface like I'm doing there. So I'm just gonna turn the uh, stone now so I can paint the edges of these um, tail fins and somewhere I had some yellow um let me just find what I've done with the yellow um, I don't know whether this yellow is going to be good enough but let's have a look in my tub of paints actually it's not too bad so I'm just going to take a touch of yellow and I'm going to add it in. I'm actually adding it into the edge of the tail like that. And I'm going to blend it. So the, the yellow sort of comes down. And because the paint is still wet, I can blend. Now this bit of the tail 
should be smooth. So I'll blend it as much as you can. And then it goes out and into a little bit more of a flowing shape. And I'm just going to drag the paint, turn the brush, so you're dragging the paint off the brush and drag the paint down to the edge of that tail fin. Just going to add a touch of white on the end like that. And I'm going to have the line sort of semi broken. So I'm going to allow the paint to sort of dry off the brush in this section so that it leaves a sort of a broken line. I don't know if you can see that. So in that instance, you want to have a broken line so you don't carry as much paint on your brush as you would do normally. So again, this paint is still wet underneath so I can blend. I'm just going to apply the orange, the, the, so, the bit of yellow, sorry, down to the end. And then I'm just going to pick up a dot of white. I'm just going to blend that in also. And then as it runs off the brush, I'm not going to fill my brush up again because I want the line to be broken at the end. Like that. Slightly broken tail end. I'm just going to transfer a little bit more over there. I'm going to blend it into the body further up like that. Just blend it in very carefully. Whoops. Just going to take a bit of that paint off. And I'm going to go up the fin, up the centre of the... Um, is he going to curve that way? Yeah. Up the centre of the fish, but in a curved line. I'm going to continue that sort of light colour like that. Okay, so there we have our, in fact I just need to put a little bit more orange in there because I think that centre of that should be less pronounced like that. A bit more white on this end here. Again, just play around with adding and taking away of colour until you're happy with it. Just going to make that a little bit lighter, that end. I'll make that end a bit lighter. Okay, so up the centre of that fish, I'm going to go with a little bit of yellow. I'm going to curve it around and then I'm going to make a, a sort of U shape there, which is where the body touches the head. Now, if you're, if you're blending colour underneath, the original orange that you've put on is a little bit dry, then it won't blend in very successfully. So add a little bit more orange into that pigment if you feel like you need it. Just blend it down like that. You can see that happening now. Just blending in. I'm going to put a touch of yellow on that fin there. Like that. Just drag it down, drag it into the head. 
around towards the eye up into that U shape there and the same on that side just to highlight on that thing like that uh, and then a touch of yellow on the tip of the nose just to give it a little bit of highlight colour again blend it in add some more orange if you feel you need it like that okay I'm going to leave that fish for a bit and then I'm going to move on to the other one so the other one needs a second coat of white so make sure your brushes oops brushes clean and just slap on a coat of white like that and I'll quickly do this and then make sure like I said that you've got plenty of paint on that brush so that it covers it in nice long sweeps and then if you feel again if it's once it's dried off if it's too oops got a bit of orange on my brush just gonna wipe that off oops oh sorry about that keep knocking this overhead camera um okay let's get that back again into the head around the front of the head and into that fin don't forget your fins like that and then into the tail fin now this is the another fin that's coming off the back of the fish but this is the tail here so I'm just going to make it a bit bigger than what I've drawn it like that okay let's just give that a quick dry Right, some blue now. So wipe your brush off, use a bit of tissue or a bit of cloth or whatever. I'm just going to work in these blue colours now. I've got a dark blue here. And we're just going to put that on the underside of this tail. Like this. Again, try and keep your paint nice and thick by not, a, not mixing it with too much water. Um, the underside of this bit here comes in. If your paint, however, is a little bit thick and you feel like you need to, mix some water into it then do so but just uh, you know go easy with it because like I said the more water you put in this paint the more temperamental it becomes so less water the better the only time I really put any extra water in is if I need the paint to flow a little bit easier for very fine lines and detail so just go careful with it and also the other thing to remember is to use appropriate size brushes so that bit there I've got a bit of a lump in it and the reason why I've got a lump in it is because the brush is too big 
it's not the fault of the paint or anything it's just that that bit there I should have had a smaller brush to work with so I'm just gonna fiddle with this for a moment and then I'll go back and even that up so I'm gonna do this the other side of the fish in the same way make sure I've got a nice point on this brush by rolling it around in the paint and then in and then along that top line there so again that end there I want it to be really fine really so I'm just gonna finish this section and then I'm going to take a slightly finer brush I'm just going to take the take that brush although that brush end looks a bit knackered I've got a smaller brush actually I'll use my rigger brush and the rigger brush is really long and thin like this and what that does is it helps you to paint really fine lines it's a good brush to have it was used for sign writing um, years and years ago well it still is that in fact used for sign writing and lettering and things like that so it's a really good brush to have if you haven't got one in your collection so again I'm just going to come around the face of that fish okay um, oh edges of fins so again up here now I'm going to do some lines in it in this one so I'm going to start at the end of the fin and then I'm just going to work down towards the fish body and put some lines in these fins like that again go carefully take your time Fine details like this will not be rushed. So take your time with them. You'll only end up with little lumpy, bumpy bits that you don't want. I like that one there. That wasn't great. Put another one in. Okay, so I'll do this one this side now again, like I started with the other one. If you can work from top to bottom, it's a much easier movement than it is working from bottom to top. And just like that. Fin at the back. I think I'll put some extra lines on that one. So this is a second layer, but with lines rather than just painting the whole thing in on the tail fin like that all right I was just applying these blue fin marks to this back fin here like so okay and then I'm just going to bring little marks up here like this slowly decreasing as I go away um, that section's okay that section's okay okay so let's now start to apply the darker colors okay so we're going to put the eyes on now so the eye, for the eyes you need either a black or a dark blue. It's up to you what you use. I've got a sort of purpley blue mix here and I'm just going to apply a little bit of eye colour in this section here and this section there and then this section here. A bit more paint. You want the eye to sort of bulge a little, like that. Same over here. Let me just turn my brush. 
Well, he's probably a bit big, but never mind. Okay. Um, I'm just going to make these ones a bit bigger, just to sort of balance with the the one that I just did there. Okay. Um, I'm going to use my rigger brush to apply some black. My black's quite thick, so I may or may need not need some more water in there. So I'll put a couple of nostrils in like this. There, you can see how this brush works. It's so good. Um, just going to get a little bit of water in there, just a touch, just to get it to flow nicely. Um, right, okay, so we've got some marks here now. So, in fact, I think I'd be better with a the bigger brush. Oh, no, maybe not. Let me just try this brush. I don't know whether the ends, no, the ends are really bad. So, just carry on with this. What you want is a, a sort of fine detail brush. And we're just going to put some random sort of blotches. These are the marks that sort of identify the fish. Um, and they're all different. So it's quite interesting to put them on really. This is where the character comes from. So enjoy. You can make up your own patterns, which is quite cool. Um, this sort of goes into a linear form when it comes up here so I'm just going to put some it's almost stripy really so just all the way down to the sort of twist of the fish there there's a slight suggestion of a fin coming in here so I'm just going to put a little line there uh, and the stripes are on this side on the underneath um, there's a slightly larger mark there I'm just going to add a little bit more eye um, there's two marks there and then we come round to the back end of the fish and it goes into sort of more of a a larger mark here as it comes around the back of the fin of the tail. Okay, I'm going to put some really fine sort of linear marks in here like this. I'm just going to let it sort of run off my brush. So it ends up being like almost like a dry brush technique and into these this part of the tail fin there like that and you might want to darken up the odd one coming down there and the and the odd one in here maybe like that just to give it a bit of depth same in there, just very loose. Um, I'm just going to mix a little bit. I've got a little bit of um, sort of raw sienna colour here, which is a, a pale brown tone. I'm just going to mix a bit of that in with my black. And I'm just going to put a little bit of that just here like that and up here just to give you the impression that there's another fin there and also just at the top ends of these fins along there a little bit there um, oh some orange in oh, a bit here also just a little bit of darkness wipe the brush off again into a bit of orange because he wants some orange markings in here like that 
just on either side of his body there. A little bit of orange just on the nose, like that. And a touch just around the eye, like that. And the bits, just a suggestion, just in that tail. I'm just going to make those marks a bit thicker. Because I want them to stand out a bit more. In there, like that. Okay. I'm just going to mix up. How are we doing? I think we're doing okay. It hasn't bumped off yet, which is good. Um, yeah. Just a couple of marks in there, like that. Okay, he's done, or she's done, or whatever. Next one is the orange fish so they, there's not a huge amount of um, detail on this orange one but I am going to put some shadow in I'm just going to use that brown color that I used earlier on with a bit of orange in it I'm just going to use one of my lids just to mix it up a little if you've got a palette that's better obviously just you want a sort of burnt orange color rather than a um, a bright orange colour. So just around the eyes there, there's a mark. We spin him around. Um, we're just going to put a little bit of darkness in around where the gills are, like that. Some marks just where the fin touches the body, like that. A little bit of darkness around the where the body hits the tail fin and the same on the other side like so like that okay um, I'm gonna put a little bit just under one side of this oops that's a bit dark let me just wipe that just using a clean brush I'm just going to spread like that just along that can you see that ridge and it just makes it sort of pop out a little bit more than it did before okay and where else a little bit on the tail and then I think you're pretty much done really I mean you can go into more detail if you want to it's up to you but considering you're going to be seeing this actually once probably a little bit let's put a touch of yellow on his nose just a touch oops just a touch of yellow just there just to give him a little bit of a highlight we'll put another bit just along catching the top of that okay so I'm going to leave mine there, I think, more or less. I might add a few bits of, I don't know though, maybe I, maybe I will. The other option is to add some sort of seaweed in or, or plant life or whatever. Um, you can carry on putting, I might carry on once it's a bit drier and put some white highlight, say, on the on the eye like this just to give it a little bit more animation and you can carry on with that but dry it off but I'm going to leave that here for the tutorial have a go send me some pictures um, it'd be really interesting to see I'll put a picture of the finished piece up so that you can see it and um, finish your bits off all right hope you have a lovely weekend um actually no because it'll be monday hope you have a lovely week and uh, i'll see you for art chat um not ne not next week not this week should i say um because i'm going to be going away so again we're going to have a week off art chat i'll see you the following week all right everybody bye for now